Hey everybody, my name is Mike Montgomery and today I'm going to be showing you how I built this murdered out coffee table using black penny tiles and black grout. If you're a new subscriber from the bus series, welcome to a Modern Builds Furniture Project. I can't wait to get started. So let's go ahead and get building on Modern Builds. The first step for this project is to cut a piece of three quarter inch plywood into a circle. I marked this out using a screw and a cord marked at 15 inches to create a circle with a diameter of 30 inches. After that, I used my drill to create a pilot hole that my jigsaw could fit into. Then I could follow that line closely and carefully to create my circle. Now I really took my time here and I was patient to try and stay right on the line, but of course it wasn't perfect. So after I had my circle cut out, I grabbed my random orbit sander with a hundred grit sandpaper and I smoothed out all of those curves and any chip out that I got from the jigsaw blade. Not a perfect circle, but it rolls well. I picked up these flat black penny tiles off of Amazon and they were a pretty decent deal. I'll be sure to leave a link down in the description. They have a good matte finish. They pick up a little bit of light without being too glossy. I've been using this Loctite Power Grab construction adhesive quite a bit lately and I really like it. It tacks quickly, which is what I'm looking for for installing this tile. I started by adding a dab of adhesive to each tile, making sure that I didn't get too much squeeze out so that it would show through the grout lines. And then I did my best to line up the center tile with that mark from the screw we used earlier. I found out that using this grout float was a great way of making sure that I applied even pressure and got these tiles stuck to the plywood really well. Typically, you would use thin set mortar to attach tile to whatever your substrate is, but thin set calls for 24 hours between laying the tile and then applying grout, and I don't want to wait that long, so this construction adhesive actually was a great option. Lining these tiles up really wasn't a problem. They're almost like a puzzle that the pieces can only fit one direction. So you just need to make sure that all of your gaps between one piece to the next are consistent and blend, otherwise there's really no problems that you should encounter. Once I realized how annoying all of the overhanging tiles were, I started marking and cutting my pieces before I installed them. I also realized you don't have to apply a dab of construction adhesive to each individual tile, and so I started running beads right down the center of each row, and that worked great. Along the way, I also realized that applying a bead of construction adhesive around the perimeter of the plywood before installing the tiles helped the edge adhere a little bit better. And if you get any adhesive on the face of the tiles, a little bit of acetone does a great job of removing that. At this point in the project, I wanted to cut all of the overhanging tiles flush with the edge of the plywood. I thought that this would look really cool. So I grabbed a masonry abrasive disc for my angle grinder and I started cutting the tiles. My first attempt was to score the backs of the tiles before I tried any plunge cuts. And unfortunately, well, you'll see. All right, so this is not going as planned. Let me fill you in. I did a few tests using the abrasive disc on the angle grinder and it works fine making straight cuts, but trying to make these curves just is not working and it's actually pulling a lot of these tiles off. So I've got a new game plan. Instead of doing this really flush cut penny tile look, I'm gonna go for the more approachable DIY method and just cut all of the overhanging tiles off. There were a few tiles that were just barely overhanging the edge, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch, and I was able to trim those okay. And really quickly, before we move on, I'd like to give a big thanks to the sponsor of today's episode. In fact, they've been a sponsor of a lot of Modern Builds episodes, and that's Squarespace. Squarespace is the number one stop for you to build your own website, and the best part is, you need zero website building experience. If you can edit text blocks and upload and drag and drop files, you are well on your way to building a custom, one-of-a-kind website. Squarespace's library of built-in designer templates look amazing right out of the gate, and you can customize them to look and function any way you prefer. Whenever I started the Modern Builds website, I used Squarespace long before they were a sponsor, and I'm still happy to say that I used them and couldn't be happier with them. So if you're interested in learning more, make sure and go to squarespace.com forward slash modern builds, where you can get a free one-week trial where you can build your own website without putting in any of your credit card info. Then, when it's time for your website to go live, don't forget to use the code MODERNBUILDS for 10% off your first site. Thanks, Squarespace. Now back to the build. My plan was to use this thin gauge sheet metal that I picked up from Home Depot as edge banding around the plywood and tiles. That way we could cover up that ugly edge. 
So I used my straight edge to mark a clean line at an inch and a quarter, and I used my angle grinder with a metal abrasive disc to cut those strips. And like I always say, it's easier to score the line and then do your plunge cut than it is to try and take away all the material at once with the angle grinder. And after I had my metal cleaned up and my edges sanded, I applied a couple of coats of flat black paint from Rust-Oleum and it really looked great. Now Loctite is not a sponsor of this episode and they're not paying for any of this product placement, although I would be open to it if they wanted to, but I just assumed that since I had already been using this product quite a bit on this project that I would try using it on the edge banding. I applied a pretty generous bead and then used a ratchet strap to clamp everything in place while the adhesive cured. The next day I could remove my clamps and I was happy to see just how clean this tabletop came out. And so now we can move on to adding grout. I'm using this pre-mixed Fusion Pro grout in the color charcoal and it dried almost black. I used a wet cloth to make sure the tops of my tile were damp and then I applied the grout just like any other product. I alternated the directions that I was pulling the grout with my float to make sure that it got into all of the cracks. And I'll leave a link down in the description if you're interested in an in-depth grouting tutorial. The edges didn't cause me too much problem. I was actually able to ride the top of that metal edge and blend out all of the grout for a really clean look. Next, I could grab my sponge and start cleaning up the grout. You wanna make sure that it's wet, but not so wet that it starts dripping. If it is, that's gonna cause you issues. If you're working with square or rectangular tile, you want your sponge to run at a 45 degree angle to your lines, but obviously you can't do that with penny tile, so a circular motion worked great. This step of the process is all about finesse. If you put too much pressure on your sponge, it's gonna dig into your grout lines and it's gonna look really ugly. Instead, you wanna use light pressure and constantly clean your sponge. That way you're removing as much excess grout as possible. If you're working with traditional grout, you would let this haze dry on top of the tiles and it just wipes away. But with this Fusion Pro grout, you'll drag a clean microfiber cloth across the surface of the tiles while that haze is still wet. If it dries on the surface of the tile, apparently it's really hard to remove and we don't want that. Now this product is not cheap, but it applies quicker than traditional grout and you don't have to go through the process of sealing it after the grout is cured. I use these 16 inch two rod hairpin legs all the time on coffee table projects. They're perfect for projects like this and I'll leave a link down in the description. And once the legs were attached, this project was done. So I love the way this project came out. It's been a while since I've done a small furniture or DIY and I'm happy to have this one go successfully. If I were to do this project again, I would have used thicker metal for my edge banding. That way the outline of the circle was a little bit more consistent. I also wouldn't even worry about the overhanging tiles or cutting them. I really like the way that they look. These just didn't cut that clean. Oh, and by the way, what's better than a coffee table that you don't need to use coasters on? Am I right? I've been thinking about ways to get creative with tile lately since I've been using it so often and I really loved this project. I dig the monochromatic all black look. I also think that this would look really cool in all white. And if you remember from the bathroom episode of the bus, I did white tile and blue grout. And I really think some kind of crazy combination like that could look awesome on a project like this too. So if you build this project or anything similar, make sure and tag me on Instagram. I love seeing your viewer submissions and sharing them on my Instagram stories. If you're not already, make sure and click that subscribe button and the notification bell. That way you stay updated every time I post new project videos. And until next time, this has been Modern Builds. Bye everybody.